turn in your Bibles tonight to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. We began studying this morning. The Word of God talks about the testimony of Jesus or the testimony of Jesus Christ. The testimony, those three statements are used quite a number of times, uh, especially in the New Testament. And I asked you, in the very beginning of the study this morning, do you have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Do you have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Unless you know what the testimony of Jesus Christ is, you can't answer that question. Uh, so the Word of God here tells us what the testimony of Jesus Christ is, and then we can consider whether or not we have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Reading now from Revelation chapter 19, read verses 9 and 10. The Word of God says, And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Most people, when they hear the word prophecy, they, their minds jump to the end of the time world, and they think about, well, prophecy is talking about people that stand up and tell you what's going to happen uh, just before Christ comes back the final time. That's not what the spirit of prophecy is. The spirit of prophecy as you study the word of God, the spirit of prophecy is when you are telling people that Jesus is going to judge us according to our works. The word prophecy means something that's going to happen in the future. Uh, every day of our lives, the word of God tells us that we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 and 11 talk about how we, we, the Apostle Paul, the people in his day, people in our day, we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Most of the Gospels are concentrating not on Christ judging us, though there is quite a bit of uh, teaching about Christ judging us, especially in the parables, but most of the Gospels are talking about Jesus as the Lamb of God. We like to hear about Jesus, the Lamb of God. Most of the New Testament is talking, the Gospels are talking about Jesus is our Savior. Nobody ever gets mad when you're talking about Jesus, the Lamb of God. Nobody ever gets mad when you talk about Jesus, the Savior, the one who has saved us from our sins. That doesn't make people mad. Many times we word of God, the Word of God talks about Jesus is our shepherd, the good shepherd, the chief shepherd. Uh, many people talk about the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. That doesn't make people mad to talk about Jesus as our shepherd. Many people talk about the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. That never makes people upset or mad. However, when it comes to the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy, which is talking about Jesus judging us and talking about us carrying out the judgment in God's word, that's when people get angry. And as you read through, we studied that this morning. We went all the way through Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 6, chapter 11, chapter 12. We went through a number of chapters where people were put to death People were persecuted because they had the testimony of Jesus Christ. They were telling people that Jesus is going to judge you according to your works. If you want to make somebody angry, you sit down with somebody and you begin to talk to them. When you see that there is sin in their life, you begin to talk to them about that sin. And you begin to talk about Jesus loves us, but that whom the Lord loves, he what? Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And so when we go contrary to God's word, we need to know that God's going to judge us according to our works. When we do what's right, God does still judge us. The difference is that when we're doing what's right, 
the judgment is blessing. When we're doing what's wrong, the judgment is cursing or suffering or chastening. So we ought to be telling people that Jesus does judge us according to our works while we live here in this earth. Right after this verse tells us that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy, look at the very next verse, Revelation 19 and verse 11. He says, the last part of verse 10 says, For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth what? He doth judge and make war. Go to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Look at beginning in verse 10. I'm just trying to establish that Jesus is the righteous judge. Jesus judges us according to our works. We don't like to hear that. Nobody ever likes to hear that. But it's something that's very important that we understand it is a responsibility that God has given us to warn people about the judgments of God. Revelation chapter 22 beginning in verse 10. The word of God says, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the, what? This whole book of Revelation is about a prophecy about the coming of Christ to judge the Jewish nation. Chapters 6 through 20 are all about the judgments of God on the Jewish nation, on Jerusalem, and how Jerusalem was going to be completely destroyed. The old literal Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. And then in chapters 21 and 22, he talks about the new Jerusalem, which is the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. The judgment of God came on the Jewish nation, and God tells us repeatedly that we better look at how God judged the Jews because God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. In fact, in the book of Romans, he tells us Gentiles that we better look at how God dealt with the Jews because he is going to deal with the Gentiles in the same way that he dealt with the Jews. America is to the Gentiles what Jerusalem was to the Jews. And just as Jerusalem and the Jews turned their backs on God, and God poured out severe judgment on them. America has turned her back on God. And God is going to, to pour out his judgment on America. And there will be a remnant of the people of God in America that are serving God, fearing God, loving God, and have the, the testimony, uh, testimony of Jesus Christ or the spirit of prophecy. There are people that are warning others about the sin in their lives. And they're not liked because they're hated because they're telling people about Jesus judging them. So Revelation 22 verse 10 says, He that saith to me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is uh, filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. It was too late for them to repent at this time. God's telling them, you go ahead and continue down the same path you've been on. It's too late. My sentence has been set. I'm going to carry out my judgment. Verse 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Jesus judges us according to our works. Jesus is the righteous judge. The word of God tells us in John that the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment to the Son. You don't think about Jesus as being a judge unless you read the book of Revelation. You think about him being the Lamb of God, but the book of Revelation speaks of him as being the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Now go back. Let's, I mentioned to you this morning, I wanted you to go home and read Ezekiel. I mentioned Ezekiel chapter 3. And Ezekiel chapter 33. Please turn back in your Bibles now. Turn back to the book of Ezekiel. Because I want you to see that God teaches the people of God that they have a responsibility to warn others when they see individuals going contrary to God's word and God's way. And you know that God is going to carry out judgment. You and I have a responsibility to judge them. And to tell them about God's judgment. <clears throat> Look at Ezekiel chapter 2. I'm going to mention this, and then we'll go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 2, starting with verse 1. By the way, 
Did everybody love Isaiah? Did anybody love Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel? No. They were hated because they had the testimony of Jesus Christ. They had the spirit of prophecy. They warned people about sin that was in their lives. Ezekiel chapter 2 now beginning with verse 1. And he said unto me, that's God said to Ezekiel, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, send, I send thee to the children of Israel. Was he sending them to all the world? No, he wasn't. He was just sending them. He was sending Ezekiel to the children of Israel, which was God's chosen nation. I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. Are they children of God? They're children of God, but they're impudent children and they're stiff-hearted. Is that, is that statement in the New Testament, similar statement in the New Testament? When Stephen was preaching to those people, he said, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hard of ears. Ezekiel is saying, God is telling Ezekiel, they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, listen carefully now to verse 5, And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a, a what? A prophet among them. He had the spirit of prophecy. He was telling them Jesus is coming to judge you because you are a rebellious and impudent people. Now he says whether they're going to hear you, whether they're going to repent or not is not the point. You are to go and warn them and when my judgment comes they will know a prophet has been among them. They'll know they were warned before I ever carried out my judgment. Now go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3 starting in verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 3 starting in verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. Now let me tell you this. All of us have been made kings and priests unto our God. All of us. It's not just the preacher's responsibility to have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's not just the preacher's responsibility to have the spirit of prophecy. It's not just the preacher's responsibility to warn people when they're going contrary to God's word and God's way. The first and great commandment is thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second is thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you see your neighbor going down a path of destruction, if you see anybody that you love that's going down a path that's going to result in severe judgment of, of God, you, if you love them, you cannot be silent and fail to speak to them about the sin in their lives. Does everybody understand that? If you don't open your mouth when you know people are going down a path of destruction, you do not love them. Did Jesus warn people repeatedly? Because he loved them. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them, what's the next word? Warning. Give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. Why wouldn't you warn him? Why wouldn't you tell him he's going to die? Why wouldn't you warn him about the way he's going? Well, I don't want to offend him. I don't want him, his feelings to be hurt. I don't want him to turn around and say, well, God's going to judge you too. There are a lot of different reasons people are reluctant to warn people about sin in their lives. If you don't warn them, I want you to know the word of God is very specific about what's going to happen to us if we don't have the spirit of prophecy and we're not warning people about the judgments of God. He says, give them warning from me. Verse 18, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. Can you save children of God's lives from the error of their way? Yes, you can. 
The same wicked man, if you don't give him warning, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. If I see you or you see me walking contrary to God's word and God's way, and you see me in a rebellious attitude and rebelling against God, and you don't open your mouth or I don't open my mouth to you, your blood will be on my head and my blood's going to be on your head if you don't give people warning the, their blood's going to be on your head. They'll die in their iniquity, but their blood's going to be on your head. Is that a serious thing to think about? I think it's very serious. Look at verse 19. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, now if you're warning the wicked, you have the, what's the first phrase from Revelation 19, verse uh, 10? The testimony. So if thou warn the wicked, then you have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You have the spirit of prophecy. You're telling them what's going to happen if they don't turn away. If thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. One more verse here. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned, also thou hast delivered thy soul. Brethren, we need to pray that God will help us to realize the seriousness of seeing the judgment of God coming and us not opening our mouths. Ezekiel chapter 33, I encourage you to go home and read that later. But it says some words very similar to what's right here. Now I want you to back up to the book of Isaiah. Back up 100, about 100 pages in your Bible. Back up about 100 pages to the book of Isaiah. I want to look first at Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Let's begin with verse 18. Isaiah, you can go home and read all of Isaiah chapter 1. You get a very, very clear picture that the children of Israel were a rebellious house. They had turned away from God. He says, the ox knows his owner and the ass is crib, but you don't even know me, God's saying to his people. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 now. Isaiah 1, verse 18. God says to Israel, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. How, how can your sins be changed from being red like crimson to being white like snow? Washed in the blood. Washed in the blood. That's true. Fundamentally, we are washed in the blood because Jesus died for us on the cross of Calvary. But there is a washing in the blood. If you go home and read Revelation chapter 7, there is a washing in the blood that we do when we repent of our sins and we wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb. That's a practical righteousness that enables us to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that's what this is talking about here. He says, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Is he giving here a spirit of prophecy? Is he prophesying something? If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel... Ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. You see both phases of the spirit of prophecy. First of all, he says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Then he says, but if you refuse and rebel, then you're going to be devoured with the sword. Verse 21 says, how is the faithful city, he's talking about Jerusalem, how is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of it was full of it was full of judgment. Did you know judgment used to be carried out in the house of God? Judgment used to be carried out in the house of God. You can go back about 50 or 75 years in almost any denomination and when individuals in the church walk contrary to God's word, judgment was carried out by the church because the word of God commanded judgment to be carried out. And in the city of Jerusalem, judgment was carried out at one time. But now he says judgment is no longer being carried out. 
Therefore, because the people were not carrying out judgment, God was going to bring his judgment on the city of Jerusalem. He says in verse 21, How is the faithful city becoming harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. So what did God tell Isaiah to do? Give them warning. Look at Isaiah chapter 58. This will be the last verse we look at in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58. Look at Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Isaiah 58 and verse 1. <clears throat> did Jesus tell people they were sinners? Did, did Jesus tell people on many occasions they were sinners? Did Jesus sometimes sit down with sinners and reason with them and convert them? Indeed he did. There were times he condemned sinners when they were rebellious, but when they were repentant, Jesus would eat with sinners. Look now at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Isaiah 58, verse 1. God tells Isaiah, Cry aloud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Why was God telling uh, Isaiah to show his people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Why was he telling them to do that? Warning. To warn them because the judgment of God is the spirit of prophecy when he's warning them about the judgments are about to come upon them. Now let's go back to the New Testament. Turn to the book of Hebrews very quickly. Hebrews. Let's spend just a few minutes in Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3 and 4 is a clear comparison of how God dealt with the Jews after they were delivered out of Egyptian bondage and then they were being led through the wilderness to the land of Canaan because of their rebellion all of those that were 20 years of age and older at the time the law was given they all died in the wilderness the scripture says we need to behold the goodness of the Lord and we need to behold the severity of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 3, start with verse 9. Hebrews chapter 3, starting with verse 9. The Apostle Paul is writing to the Jews. He says, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Isn't that what we read about in Ezekiel? Isn't that what we read about in Isaiah? He says, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. What was the specific rest under consideration in this verse of Scripture? It was the land of Canaan. That's right, Brother David. And so he says now to us, he says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Can children of God have an evil heart of unbelief? And depart from the living God. The only people who can depart from the living God are people that have been with the living God. And he says, we better take heed lest there be in any of you. Can an evil heart of unbelief be in me and in you? And if you see an evil heart of unbelief and rebellion in me, you have the responsibility to come to me and warn me. How the, what's the first phrase? Have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Have the, what's the second phrase? The spirit of prophecy. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. The rest of this chapter is talking about how they were not allowed to enter the land of Canaan because of their unbelief. Chapter 4, verse 1. Hebrews 4, 1. After he, told, after he says in uh, verse 19 of chapter 3, he says, So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief chapter 4 verse 1 says let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it is he, is he saying that you might come short of being good enough to get into eternal heaven is that what he's talking about absolutely not however you can come short of entering into his rest just like the children of Israel fell short of entering into that rest the land of Canaan what is the rest we can fall short of entering into the kingdom of heaven let us therefore fear 
lest the promise being left to us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 11 says, let us, Hebrews 4.11 says, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. I'm just going, I encourage you to go home and read Hebrews 10, 24. You know what the first uh, verse is in Hebrews 10, 24 through 31? Let me just read that verse. Hebrews 10, 24. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Where God said, let us consider one another and provoke unto love and to good works. You know what that's talking about? Let us consider one another and provoke one another to love and good works. You know what that's talking about? That's talking about the testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy. Provoke one another to love and to good works. And he talks about how God judges us severely if we sin willfully. Come down to verse 30 and 31. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 30 says, For we know him that said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge. What are the last two words there? His His people. Who did Jesus come to save according to Matthew chapter 1 verse 21? He came to save his people from their sins. Who does he judge according to their works while they live here in this world? His people. He says it is a fearful thing in verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13 verse 4. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. The word of God says... Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. Now listen carefully. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. I'm going to just pause here a minute. If you know somebody that's committing adultery or fornication, and you don't open your mouth, you're guilty of watching them go down a path of destruction, and God's judgment's going to be on your head. Let me even say to you parents that are here, listen carefully to what I'm about to say. There are parents that buy their daughter's birth control pills because they're afraid they're going to get pregnant. There are parents that buy their daughter's other devices that are implanted in them to keep them from getting pregnant. And I don't like the word pregnant, to keep them from having a child. If as a parent, If you're doing something that's contributing to your children having sexual relations outside of marriage, if you're doing something to help them do that, their blood is on your hand. Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. I'll close with uh, Matthew 16, 27 and 28. Matthew 16, 27 and 28. Matthew chapter 16, 27 and 28, Jesus here is giving the testimony of Jesus Christ. He's giving the spirit of prophecy. He's telling about what's going to happen in the future, in the very near future. He's telling about something that's going to happen while some of those people that he was talking to were still living. Matthew chapter 16, verses 27 and 28. Jesus says, for the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man? Jesus Christ. The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. If your works are good, what is the reward? Blessing. Blessing. If your works are evil, what is the reward? Cursing. He's going to come and he's going to judge every man according to his works. Verse 28 says, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. There were some of those people that Jesus was talking to that were still alive 34 years later when Jesus came and destroyed Jerusalem. The Son of Man came in the lifetime of some of those people and he established his kingdom and he destroyed Jerusalem. The old Jerusalem was completely destroyed And the new Jerusalem was established during the lifetime of some of those people he spoke to right there. I pray that God will help all of us tonight. First of all, first of all, listen carefully. 
Don't go running around trying to straighten everybody else out in the world. What's the first thing every one of us needs to do? The first thing we need to do is examine ourselves and consider our own ways and sweep around our own front door and clean up our own house. And after you've done that, in the spirit of humility and in the spirit of love, approach your brothers and sisters in Christ to let them know you love them too much to let them go down a path of destruction without you talking to them in love. May God help us is my prayer for Christ's sake. When we walk with